Hey everybody, welcome to Neil Talks. My name's Neil, and it's time to talk the House of the Dragon. But first, this public service announcement. Face blindness. It's a terrible affliction that most of us experience only occasionally in our lives, if at all. However, for those unfortunate few, approximately every one out of 100 reactors, it is a permanent affliction, and it can be debilitating. Imagine not being able to recognize a character that you saw just five minutes ago because he shaved his head. Imagine not being able to tell the difference between an Oscar-winning actor and some guy you've never seen before. Imagine not being able to tell that a show has replaced one actress with another because of an age gap. These are the fears of everyone who has full-time face blindness. The good news is you can help. Just pennies a day will help those who are permanently face blind continue to survive as we fight for a cure. Check out patreon.com slash neiltalks now to see how you can help. My name is Neil and I am face blind. Thank you very much for your support. That's right guys, I screwed up royally last week. My face blindness showed in the extreme because I had no idea that that was Lenor rowing away in the boat with Carl. Because face blindness is real. Anyway, um, that of course changes everything. Lenor has not been killed. Lenor has been allowed to escape with, with the man he loves. They're going to go to Essos, Pentos, maybe, maybe somewhere else. Who knows? Doesn't really matter. They're going to be happy together. And the questions it, it, it raises are very different ones. Does Rhaenyra know? Does Daemon know? Daemon, in retrospect, it felt like Daemon was hinting at it. But does Rhaenyra know? Is Daemon going to keep that from her? Or were they both implying that? They obviously want the world to think that they actually killed Laenor. Or at least suspect them of killing Laenor. Because that makes the world wonder. What else are they capable of? That that was their discussion at the end of last episode as they looked out to sea. But they are now the power couple back in King's Landing. And it certainly does reinforce Rhaenyra's claim to the throne. She's got a powerful, strong man at her side, another Targaryen, another dragon. They were the original two competitors to be heir. And now they're allies their husband and wife. So it certainly strengthens their position. On the other side of the board, Aegon's kid brother just tamed the largest dragon in the world. But Aemond and Aegon aren't exactly best of friends. Aegon's been bullying his younger brother, it appears, his entire life, especially since he never he was the only one only one who didn't have a dragon. But Aemon seems to be much more politically savvy, much more focused, more intelligent, just more driven. And now he has a big, big gun, for lack of a better word. Yeah, Vagar is a game changer. How it changes the game, I'm not entirely sure, but it certainly makes things more interesting as we head back to King's Landing. So... Yeah, I'm very curious to see what happens next. Again, is there a time jump? Are we are we sort of in our timeline now? The last two episodes have happened essentially back to back timeline wise, and so are we sort of settling in now? I'm I'm as curious about the the children at this point as I am about their parents and their grandparents. I've stopped wondering when Viserys is going to die, because apparently the man's immortal. Now that I've said that, he's probably going to croak at the end of this episode. Whatever. I'm very intrigued by, you know, Otto. Otto's the hand again. And he and his daughter are, he's no longer manipulating his daughter. He and his daughter are now allies. Um, his daughter is actively creating alliances to ensure that not only do her children survive when Viserys dies, 
but that Aegon takes the throne. She's got some of the Kingsguard on her side. She's got uh, Lord Larys, the new Lord of... Um, uh, why am I blanking on the name of the castle? But you know the one I mean. The, 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 the dude that just burned his elder brother and his dad to death. And it feels like Rhaenyra is reinvigorated to assert her case. She's with a man she loves... Perhaps they can have an obvious Targaryen heir. The rumors about her her previous two children, Jace and Luke, probably won't go away. And yet Jace is next in line. So what happens if Rhaenyra has a child with Daemon, a true 100% Targaryen child? Does that complicate the situation or does that just help reinforce their line i don't know but i'm really interested in jumping into it so let's do that now this is episode eight of house of the dragon it's been near six years since i last saw my lord husband maester i must know will he live ship's maester said he burns from within six years later the time jumps man the sea snake is strong hmm. no doubt and yet I have seen blood fever overcome men half his age. And who will take the driftwood throne? The crown has good reason to take my side. My cousin the king would have your tongue for this. But it's not a king who sits the iron throne these days, good sister. It's a queen. It's a queen. Alicent's basically ruling things while Viserys dies. But it's six years later, and Viserys still lives. Jeez. I think that's what I inferred from that. Yeah. Because we they would have said something to the effect of Viserys' death. Oh, look at all the construction. What is this? What is it? Oh, it's a... Oh, that's where dragon eggs come from. Wow. I didn't get a close enough look. Is this, is this aiming to six years later? No, it was Damon. Okay. So Rhaenyra and Damon are still at uh, Dragonstone. Oh wow! I hope the end. The mouth. Jace or Luke? Perhaps that's enough for this morning. No, no. I, I want to keep going. A king should honor the traditions of his forebears. Well, unless you're planning to depose your own mother, you have plenty of time to study. <laughs> But it doesn't come naturally, because he has less High Valyrian in him than perhaps everyone is meant to think. He means to call into question Luke's legitimacy. Rhaenys has flames a cord. Surely she cannot be planning to back yet. No. She believes we had her son killed so that we might marry. Yes. And yet she's taken Baila to war. Okay, so they, they both know that Laenor escaped. Is this their King's first child man. that she's pregnant with? So much to absorb. These time jumps, you like have to like pay attention to every tiny detail because it's all exposition. At least it's show, don't tell, but you have to look at everything because it all matters. And now they go to King's Landing. What kind of welcome shall there be? No king or queen to welcome them. Interesting. I would say it's nice to be home, but I scarcely recognize it. On the harbor master's receipt. Okay, we're seeing the star of the seven everywhere all of a sudden. The crown must choose what is best for the realm. He is Lenor's son. What grounds could there be what for... What indeed, Lord Beesbury? What indeed? So the... So basically, Allison gets to decide who gets Driftmark. It's about the Prince. There's been a delicate situation in his apartments. Prince Aegon? Aemond? Which one? Well, he hasn't touched his model for years. It's all cobwebby. Oh, man. Oh. It's barely anything more than a corpse. 
You are to affirm your position for Lucerus. To be Corlys Valarian's successor. There's someone we wish to introduce you to. Oh, they have, they do have a kid. Together. The makeup's insane. Like, he looks like he's lost half his body weight. I'm sure some of it's CG enhanced, but man, is it good. This is Aegon. Oh. Aegon. They have an Aegon too. this is Viserys. They have two and she's pregnant with a third. Now that is a lame. Fit for a king. <laughs> <laughs> Her mighty. Okay. This? Yes. Milk of the poppy or? Come here, sweetling. Did she sleep with the prince or something else entirely? I asked him to stop. Your grace, you must believe me. He just raped her? I believe you. You do? I do. She still doesn't have a good future ahead of her. But, but what I worry about... ...is whether you're pregnant. It's what others might believe. Others might not be so trusting. So you tell no you one might think else. you're trying to besmirch the prince, or worse. I presume we're talking about Aegon. They haven't even said that yet. You have just been bought. Mm, yeah. And we have to make sure that there's no offspring. Man, she's just... It's all calculation. Get up! How many times do we have to see this dude naked? Uh, think of the shame on your wife. On me. Oh, he's married. How can you keep carrying on like this? Oh, he married his sister, of course. He was supposed to, anyway. You are no son of mine. Whoa. Oh, jeez. My face blindness is kicking in again, because I honestly don't know whether they recast Aegon, either. Addled on milk of the poppy while the high towers warm his throne. Rhaenyra, if you would see him without it, almost blind with suffering. And on the morrow, which authority will sit in judgment of my son's claim on his own inheritance? That would be mine. Oh. And the hands. <laughs> no one would question me being heir to Driftmark. If I look more like Sir Lainor Valarian than Sir Harwin Strong. It doesn't matter what they think. That's gotta be Eamon. Yep. <laughs> oh, he's changed. Sword versus flail, man. You win in Tawny's in no time. I don't give a shit about Tawny's. <laughs> nephews? Have you come to train? Yeah, I guess they are nephews, aren't they? Even though they're of similar age. The next Lord of the Ties will be deeply in your debt, Your Grace. As will Driftmark. In all its strength. Further alliances are forged. Bela said you might be here. You've um, raised her admirably. You honor me. Princess. So were the sisters s separated? This is no fair proceeding. It is a trap. Yet you did worse than that with Lenor. I loved your son. I did not order his death. Nor was I complicit in it. I swear this to you. Because he's not dead. It's all technically true. Back Luke's claim and let us betroth Lena's children to mine. A generous offer. Hmm. Or a desperate one. What does it matter? Is that what's is that what's going to happen? Tomorrow the high towers land their first blow. And I must stand alone. Nope, that's not what's gonna happen. These rules of inheritance aren't nearly as fast as they ought to be, as strict as they should be. I feel like if you're gonna establish a monarchy, you need them to be inarguable, whether they're just or not. The Song of Ice and Fire, do you believe it to be true? Hmm. I got a dream. That's what she's motivated by. By naming me heir, you divided the realm. I thought I wanted it. But the burden is a heavy one. If you wish me to bear it, then defend me. And my children. You don't often see anyone die like this in, in this world. Usually it's a violent, quick, early death instead of these long, protracted deaths by disease and dementia. The whole of my family wants us to dine together. 
Bring milk of the poppy. Let's drug him up. I mean, I get that you want to kill pain, but you're certainly using it for two purposes here. And the makeup and the... There, there's makeup visual effects here, too, for sure. He's so gaunt, but it's good. As hand, I speak with the king's voice on this and all other matters. Oh, he actually sits on the throne as hand. Our forebearers came to this new land knowing that were they to fail, it would mean the end to their bloodlines and their name. Citing bloodline already. The true, unimpeachable blood of House Valarian runs through my veins. As it does in my sons. What do you know of Valarian blood, princess? This is a matter of blood, not ambition. I humbly put myself before you as my brother's successor, the Lord of Dritchmark and Lord of the Tides. Is Rhaenys going to put her granddaughter for up for it? I will start by reminding the court that nearly 20 years ago in this very room... Who is it? Oh, here comes the king. The series of House Targaryen, King of the Andals, and the Rhoynar, and the First Men. Oh, <laughs> he's Lord doing it. Kingdoms and protector of the realm. God damn, he's a hero. Look at the worry on Allison's face. Oh, he's got a gold mask. Like, he's the son of a harpy almost. Man. Just the performance in that walk. <laughs> he's doing this for her. He's doing this all for Renu. I will sit the throne today. <laughs> right. uh, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. The climb. Oh, don't fall on a sword, dude. I said I'm fine. Oh, oh, perfect. God. It's amazing that these two men are brothers. Like, look what sitting on the throne was done to one of them. Can't help to have like. A heavy gold crown and a heavy gold mask when every every bit of it tires you out. I must admit my confusion. <laughs> the only one present who might offer keener insight into Lord Corliss's wishes is the Princess Rhaenys. Oh, she can she can control this now. Maybe. It was ever my husband's will that Driftmark pass through Selenor to, to his true-born son, Lucerus Valarian. Wow. As a matter of fact, the Princess Rhaenyra has just informed me of her desire to marry her sons Jace and Luke to Lord Corliss's granddaughters, Shayla and Rhaena. She's a seizing it. to which I heartily agree. Well, <laughs> the matter is settled. All right. I will not allow it. That is no true Valarian. My house survived the doom. I will not see it ended on the account of this. Say it. <laughs> you gonna say the B word? Her children are bastards! And she is a whore. Wow. Off with his head, right? It has to be. I will have your tongue for that. Or his head. He can keep his tongue. <laughs> I must put things right. Uh. I must put things right. All right. So Luke and Reyna will get married and rule at Driftmark. Jace and Bela will get married and eventually inherit the Iron Throne. Assuming. What a shot! <laughs> wow. Eamon looks so badass now. <laughs> well done, Jace. You'll finally get to lie with a woman. Prince Luceris. A future Lord of the Tides. Hey, hey. You'll be great. <laughs> you do know 
how the act is done. I assume. Hey, you a shit. I had to put your cock and all that. You've grown so distant from each other. In the years past. Presumably he's lost an eye. Is it worse than that? Wow, that's so effective. I wish you to see me as I am. Let us no longer hold your feelings in our hearts. He's a good, good man. The crown cannot stand strong if the house of the dragon remains divided. But set aside your grievances. But I love that he's still got his mind. But it's proof that they just kept him doped. And for the sake of this old man, who loves you all so dearly. Wants to make it right, but I, I think it's too far gone for that to happen. I wish to raise my cup to Her Grace the Queen. She has tended to him with unfailing devotion, love, and honor. Okay, she sees that. And That's for good. that, she has my gratitude and my apology. Now you have to do something, Alicent. We have more in common than we sometimes allow. You will make a fine queen. Is this over? No, I think they're just doing this for... for Viserys. They're just doing it for Viserys. Because I can't imagine the conflict doesn't remain. They may even mean what they're saying, but the conflict remains. I regret the disappointment you assume to suffer. But if you ever wish to know what it is to be well satisfied, all you have to do is ask. Chase. To Prince Aegon and Prince Aemond, I hope we may yet be friends and allies. Jace is going to be a good king if he ever gets the yes, chance. Well. Aegon's a shit. I would like to toast Vela and Reyna. They'll be married soon. It isn't so bad. Mostly he just ignores you. <laughs> Okay, Jace is just doing this to get at a Aegon. They're, they're, he's not going to steal Aegon's wife away. Feels like he's got a good match with Bela. But Viserys feels he's, done, he's made things right. But I don't think he has. I think he's about to die. Now that he's made things right. Oh, it's a pig. To the health of my nephews, each of them handsome, wise, strong. Amen. Come. Oh. I dare you to say that again. Why? Do you not think yourself strong? I was merely expressing how proud I am of my family, mother. Mm. Though it seems my nephews aren't quite as proud of theirs. Wait, wait! It's best, I think, if we go back to Dragonstone. You've only just arrived. I'll, um, return on Dragonback. The King and I would both like that. Okay, maybe there's some actual mending of bridges here. Between the two women, at least. But Aemond has zero love for Jason Luke. He is the wild card now. He's got that young Damon energy. Who's this? Who's in the cave? It's been quite a night at the castle, it seems. Yes, lady. Who are those two? Face blindness. Tell me if I'm, I should know, but... Oh, this feels like the death of the Sarah scene right here. I'm sorry. Aegon. Our son. His dream. The Song of Ice. And fun. Oh, she doesn't know about it the song. Is true. The prince that was promised. Prince Aegon. To unite the realm. Confusing the names. You must do this. Because he thinks he's talking to his daughter right now. So they both think they have 
prophecy they have to fulfill. I understand, my king. Wow. My love. Poi. Okay, well, unless, unless this is another tease, I'm going to say Viserys is dead. And we took another time jump. We went another, he lasted another six years, and he was in such rough shape at the end of the last episode. And yet here, it was a whole new level, and they started adding the CG, aging and disease and frailty and outright erosion of the body to really good effect. Like, I thought it was incredibly well done. Like, long, lingering shots on him without that mask, you know, with, with his empty eye cavity, with the the exposed sinews in his, in his jaw and that sort of thing. It worked. They sold it. I believed he was being held together by, by maesters and milk of the poppy and very little else. And yet, when Rhaenyra... And Damon came back to King's Landing. He he made the conscious decision to not take the milk of the poppy for a day, to clear his head, to make his way down to the Iron Throne on his own, under his own power, so that he could rule on 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 who inherits Driftmark. And so much could be said about Viserys just by his actions in this episode, in this episode alone. You know, we, we've said since the beginning, he may not be a great king, but he's a really good man. He cares about his family. He wants, he cares about love. I mean, the, 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 if those are his last words, his last words are to his, his original wife, his true love, the, the woman that he always held dear. Last episode, when we were in Driftmark, he... He called Alicent um, by his first wife's name. I'm blanking on her name right now, even though I just heard it. Um, Emma. There we go. Yeah. he's a. He wants to be a good father. He wants to be a good husband. He wants to... Family is his legacy. And he may not have been an amazing king, but he wasn't a terrible king either. The problem is, is the decision he let... He let his love for his family guide his decisions more than he, perhaps he ought to have. And, and now we're in this precarious situation. And yet, and yet, his final real act as king was to bring his family back together and beg for them to forgive each other their trespasses and, and reunite. And at first I thought that it, none of it was genuine. But it started to feel like maybe it was, especially between Alicent and Rhaenyra, who were, let's remember, best friends once. Long time ago, and a lot's happened since, but they were once best friends. And 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 their toasts to one another reflected that, that they, they appreciate what the other is doing, that they can understand and appreciate that. And um, you know, I think I think it was Allison that said, We're not we're not so different. And I think that's really true. And, and, and especially when they took Viserys away and the two women were still talking, the masks didn't drop. They, they remained genuine to one another. The wild card at that table is absolutely Aemond. Aemond holds this resentment from the bullying of his childhood, from his brother, from the, the crown, uh, from Jace and Luke. The roast pig gets placed in front of him um, as a reminder of, of the dragon prank that they played on him. But he's transformed. I mean, obviously there's new actors for all four, for, for Jace, Luke, Aegon, and Aemond. But, but Aemond in particular has really transformed, and he's going to be, he's going to be a challenge. He's not going to stand for Jace on the throne. He's not... Probably not going to stand for Luke on the throne of Driftmark. He considers them enemies because he considers them bastards. And yet, look what happens if you call them bastards. Damon cuts your head off right there in front of the Iron Throne. And nobody questions it because that's treason right there. Questioning the, the lineage of the future king. That's why Damon was begging 
Um, what was his name? Vaymond? Is that uh, Corliss's younger brother? Vaymond, who's now dead? Uh, begging him to say it because he just wanted to kill him. He just wanted to eliminate that uh, that petition, so to speak. But prior prior to that, Rhaenys made the calculating smart move to side with Rhaenyra and Luke and to wed the cousins. And so Luke and Jace have future brides. There actually seems to be some friendly kinship there. They may be good partners. I'm really impressed with Jace. He's like taking this, he's taking it seriously. One day he's going to be king. So he needs to focus on these things. He he needs to learn High Valyrian, even though he wants to beat the crap out of Aegon at that dinner, because Aegon's being a complete shit. He restrains himself. He He understands the value of diplomacy. And yet he will always have this thing of not of, of being the bastard son of Lord Strong hanging over his, his name. Except, and yet his name is Valerion and will be Targaryen as soon as he sits on the throne. So, yeah, it's... I'm, 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 I'm most interested in that youngest generation, the, 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 the Jaces and the Aemons and the Aegon. A- Aegon, like, is terrible. Just, just a complete waste. I mean, he he's married to his sister, has no interest in her, is raping the help, uh, has no interest in living up to the potential of being a the future king that his mother dreams upon him, and he just he'd rather play the jester. And yet, at the very end of this episode, Viserys tells Alicent. Aegon is the promised prince. I mean, he says it in a drug-induced haze, and he doesn't say it to Alice, and he thinks he's saying it to Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra understands the Song of Ice and Fire. Alicent has no clue, but Alicent will use his dying words as her motivation to put her son on the throne, because it must be done. The dying words of the king. Of course, no one else is there to hear it, it's just her word, but she, Alison, is not duplicitous. She she feels that everything she's doing is for the right reason because her son is the firstborn son of the king, and and sure her father's what was a, her puppet master in early years, but since she's. Uh, I think she's grown to the cause, and she, you know, she really believes that Aegon rightfully deserves the throne. Of course, that's not going to happen easily, and they don't have as many allies as we thought they might. If Vaymond was indeed granted the throne of Driftmark, the Driftwood throne, then she'd have another ally. But that didn't happen, so her allies remain few, as far as we know. But what next? And you know, here's the interesting thing. Like, I keep coming back to Aemon because he fascinates the heck out of me. He will have zero love for Jace on the throne or Rhaenyra. I guess, I mean, at the, I, I keep talking about Jace ascending the throne, but Rhaenyra will be queen first. She's the heir. Aemon will have, won't, won't believe that's worthy either. But will he fight for his brother? His brother was just as much a bully to him as Jace and Luke were. So, will he be the third party in this fight? Will he try and get the throne for himself? Will, like, I could see Aemon engineering an accidental death to his brother somehow. And then Mother could be fighting for him to ascend the throne. And wouldn't that be... Like, he's the one that wants it. Aegon has no interest. A- Aegon's useless. But Aemon is focused and driven. He's he's become like an incredibly skilled fighter. He's got the biggest dragon in the world. He actually respects his sister. If like Aegon died, Aemon would marry his sister and actually be loyal to her and provide an heir and all the rest of these things. He would do things right. But he'd also probably be an evil bastard king. There's a lot of hate in the heart of that that guy. 
Anyway, I'm super interested to see where we go next. We've only got two episodes left. Episode 9 is usually the one where all the shit goes down in the Game of Thrones world, so... You have to assume next episode kicks off with the official The King is Dead, Long Live the Queen announcement. And if that's the case, how quick until things turn rebellious or violent or civil war esque who knows but i think th i think i think things kick off for real next episode and uh it's been a really interesting ride up to here but i think we're really just getting started so man cannot wait to see what happens next thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today here on neil talks your time means the world to me i appreciate your support your comments your thoughts i'd like to hear them all don't forget to like and subscribe and once again, I apologize for my, for my face blindness. It's not, it's, it's real, folks. The struggle is real. In any case, until next week, everybody. Take care, stay healthy. I'll see you soon. Cheers.